What's up? I'm Triple Shoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick one, I'll be showing you how to optimize Tarkov Arena for the best FPS and competitive edge possible. Then, quickly, a few things. First of all, this game isn't released to everyone at the current point in time. They've only rolled it out to one third, and more users will be allowed in in the short future. I'm one of the lucky few that got in. It's completely random, so at least now I can make this video. And second, this video is not going to cover Windows optimization at all. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find a link to a Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides to get even more out of your PC. Without further ado, let's open up the Battlestate Games Launcher, select EFT Arena, and get straight into it. All right, so from the main menu, we'll head into settings over here and we'll start on the game tab. First of all, field of view. While field of view does technically affect your FPS, set this to whatever you're most comfortable with and play best with. For me, 50 is far too low. 75 is much more like it, especially on an ultra wide head bobbing. Personally, I keep to an absolute minimal to not only reduce motion sickness, but less movement, motion blur and things like that should give you better visibility and a competitive edge technically. The only other thing here we need to worry about is use physical cores. Now, for most people, this will have almost no effect on your system. However, I've heard from a lot of AMD users, if you have this option ticked, you'll tank FPS and untick it, you'll get that FPS back. It's very weird and very situational. When you're actually in game, see how it plays, then turn this off, restart your game and see if anything changes. Personally, I'm pretty sure I don't get any change having this enabled or disabled on my setup, so I'll leave it ticked here. Technically, having this ticked should mean that actions aren't queued on different threads on one core. Instead, they're just executed as soon as possible, or at least I would think. In theory, it's good, but in practice, it works a bit different and can be unpredictable. So for now, I'll save, head back into settings, and we'll go to the graphics tab. In here, set your screen resolution to your monitor, in my case, 2K, and after recording, I'll be setting this to ultra wide. Set your screen mode to full screen, though do keep in mind, some systems don't lose any performance if you play on borderless, and it should make tabbing out and back in a lot easier. That being said, both of these options should be good, but full screen is supposed to be the better of the two. On others, it may be borderless. Once again, you'll need to play around with this option on your setup. Aspect ratio should be 16 by 9, most likely. Otherwise, it could be something different if you're playing ultra wide, etc. V-Sync should definitely be turned off and multi-monitor support as well, though it's currently not available in this build version. Overall graphics quality will start on medium and work our way up or down depending on your system. Then this is where things start to get a little bit iffy. What you need to do is find out if your CPU or GPU limited. To get my task manager, I'll just switch to borderless and I can pull up windows over Tarkov here. If I open up my task manager with control shift and escape, then head across to the performance tab, you'll see CPU here and GPU at the very bottom most likely. If you find that when you're in game, your CPU is pinned almost all the way to 95, 100%, your CPU limited as in your CPU is holding your powerful graphics card and system back. If you find that your CPU limited, lowering settings in Tarkov isn't necessarily going to gain you stability, performance, etc. It may actually cost you more FPS as it's trying to work your CPU harder instead of utilizing your extra GPU lying over. So if your CPU limited, you may find that actually raising some options, putting more load on your graphics card and taking more load off your CPU is something that can benefit you. If your GPU limited or your system is well balanced, usually lowering settings will give you better performance in game. Starting off with texture quality, usually I'd say this completely depends on the amount of VRAM in your system. If you've got four gigs, set it to low, six gigs, medium, high, maybe eight gigs and above. But Tarkov's a bit of a weird one in that these settings here actually have a big effect on how much RAM, not VRAM, system memory your game uses. On certain maps, this can absolutely eat all that your system has available and others, it'll barely touch it. I've seen people say that on Lighthouse and different maps, the game can use 16 or even more gigabytes of RAM, completely destroying your performance. So lowering texture quality is something you may need to do and raising it could cost you way more performance if you're not aware. If you're someone like me with a ludicrous amount of RAM in my system, this option isn't really something you need to worry about, especially if your graphics card has 10 or more gigabytes of VRAM available. In my case, I can definitely set this up to high 
and the game should look a lot better without performing any worse. Usually, textures loaded into RAM and VRAM have no effect on performance except for making the game look a bit better. If you set this option too low, you won't gain any FPS, and too high, you'll be constantly swapping textures in and out of your graphics card, lowering your performance quite a lot. Just to be safe, if you're not sure, set this down to low and continue playing the game. Shadows quality, as well as scrolling down, HBAO and SSR are three options you should be lowering for more performance unless you're on a system that's CPU limited, in which case raising shadows, HBAO and SSR can give you better performance by putting more load on your graphics card. Shadows quality, usually I wouldn't recommend having on low as that may get rid of some shadows, including player shadows and things like that. Medium is a good place to keep this if you're not CPU bound. HBAO has to do with lighting, I'm pretty sure, and having this set to max performance, if not off, is probably what you'll want here. Screen space reflections, SSR, are nice to have and they add a lot of quality and visual fidelity to the game. Turning these off will make things look really flat, so low is the lowest I would go here. Once again, raising these three options can improve performance on CPU limited systems. Object LOD quality has to do with the quality of objects loaded in close to you and further away. Having this number set to a lower option here should use less VRAM and cause less stuttering as objects move closer and further away from you, swapped in and out of your system. If you find that you have a powerful system, this option will usually have almost no impact on performance and you can set it in the midpoint three here. Overall visibility, you'd usually want to low for more FPS, but in a game like Tarkov, it's actually important to have this set pretty much all the way to the max as this option, while you think only affects buildings and things like that, can actually affect players, scavs, etc. Having this option raised to the max can be a gameplay and competitive advantage, so you may want to keep that in mind if you choose to lower this. And if you lower it, of course you'll gain more FPS, usually, but not seeing players is definitely a huge disadvantage. Then these next options, anti-aliasing, resampling, DLSS, AMD FSR 1 and 2.2 are all different upscaling methods or rather methods of cleaning up your screen. Essentially, these ones down here, these three, have effects on how your game renders the window and uses AI to crank up to full screen from a smaller window. The harder you make these things work, as in more to the performance side, the more weird visual artifacts you'll begin to notice. If you choose to use any of these options, make sure you have it set to quality. So 2.2 quality, 1.0 quality, or DLSS quality here. That'll give you the least amount of weird visual artifacts, making it a little bit easier to see through trees and things like that without weird glitches catching your eye and distracting you. What I would recommend is playing with AMD FSR 2.2 for the best visibility and performance even if you're not using an AMD GPU and instead you're playing on NVIDIA. DLSS makes the game seem needlessly blurry, so FSR 2.2 on quality is probably what I'd recommend. If you don't want to play with any upscalers, instead use anti-aliasing as TAA or even TAA high, but it'll make the game look a bit blurry while getting rid of harsh jagged edges. Simply scroll all the way down to sharpness and you'll be raising this option until the game doesn't seem blurry for you, plus maybe one step on top of that. I wouldn't recommend maxing this out as it'll give you the painkiller effect pretty much all the time and when you do take painkillers and things like that in game, it'll definitely wreck your vision completely. Resampling, I'd usually recommend leaving on one for the best performance and visuals. If you insist on using resampling or downsampling, instead use DLSS or FS are here. Personally, I'll be using FSR 2.2 on quality. HBAO and SSR we covered. Anisotropic filtering filters textures to make them look a little bit better, add more depth, etc. This is purely visual and usually a very cheap effect on modern games. You can lower this for more performance, technically, but to be honest, on most modern systems, this isn't something you're going to notice or even worry about. You can leave this on or per texture for a better looking game with a marginal FPS impact. In Video reflex low latency, we have three options here. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, that's I think 20 or 30 series and above. If you have this option and an NVIDIA graphics card, I'd recommend turning this on unless you're CPU limited, once again reaching 90 to 100% CPU while playing the game, set this to on plus boost. That'll help in those circumstances. For me, I'll set this to on. Then sharpness, we already went through. You can raise this if things are needlessly blurry. And finally, lobby FPS limit. I'd recommend leaving this at 60 but you can drop it to 30 to give your graphics card a little bit of time to cool down when you're on the main menu, lobby, etc. If overheating is an issue, power usage, etc. If you tab out of the game, 
especially while on the main menu on a much lower end system. Lowering this option here will give you better performance in browsers, etc. when you're not in the game itself and instead you're in the lobby. You'll notice that when we enabled Nvidia Reflex low latency, we lost the game FPS limit over here. You'll need to have this turned off if you're going to be capping your FPS in the game. But keep in mind, you can limit your FPS using the Nvidia control panel if this option affects you. Then at the very bottom, MIP streaming, these are both turned off and thus we enable MIP streaming down here, in which case we can customize it. This is a very in-depth option and essentially has to do with the speed and way that textures are swapped out between higher and lower quality when you get closer and further away from them. It's a very in-depth topic and if you're interested, I'd highly recommend checking out Clementine. You'll find this video linked down below. They go through a 10 minute explanation on this option as well as its effects on performance and it's an incredibly well put together video. Essentially, the MIP streaming disk usage limit is most likely in megabytes, the speed of the drive that the game is on. If you have the game on a hard drive, set this down, and if you have it on an SSD, you can comfortably raise this up, if not all the way on higher powered SSDs. This will load in and load out textures a lot faster with almost no performance impact. Going through their performance results, essentially having this option on uses more CPU to give you a more stable FPS. In offline raids where everything is calculated on your CPU, including bot movements, etc., you're much more CPU limited in that case, especially with lower powered hardware, so enabling this will give you more FPS. But when you're playing online raids where scav movements and things aren't being processed on your system, this option may have the opposite effect and having this enabled uses more of your CPU, causing more of a bottleneck, lowering your FPS while not actually gaining you anything. Essentially, having this enabled should take away some load from your CPU, giving you better performance. If you're not CPU limited, this option isn't really going to help you if you have it enabled. Instead, leave it off, as counterintuitive as that is. Oh, and also, not to mention, having it enabled should lower the amount of VRAM being used, putting the load on your CPU. So if you're running a really low-end graphics card, having this enabled may actually help you. It's very situational, especially for your computer. Once again, if you like a more in-depth explanation, which I'd highly recommend you watch if you're interested, you'll find it linked down below. High quality color is a good option to have on, Z Blur I'd recommend having off, chromatic aberrations as well, and grass shadows too. Anything that adds visual noise is going to be distracting while you play the game, just like the leaf blower running outside. Speaking of noise, noise. Visual noise can not only be distracting, but it can be completely overbearing in some situations. I'm kidding, it's not actually that bad, but the noise here, having this enabled adds more visuals that could catch your eye, distracting you from the game. Having this off is usually better. Not only that, but more things happening on your screen makes your encoder work a lot harder if you're streaming or recording. So if you're using a variable bitrate or quality setting for streams and recordings, it's most likely going to use a lot more bandwidth or file size in order to keep all the new visual information. At this point, I'll save and we can continue. On the post effects tab, heading across to post FX, you should usually have all of these disabled for the best performance, but enabling this, you can adjust your brightness, saturation, clarity, etc., which could give you better vision depending on your monitor and color settings, though you may prefer to adjust these in something like NVIDIA control panel. These should have minimal impact on FPS, but any sort of extra work that your game is doing can cost you performance and differently so on different systems. If you choose to have this enabled, color grading is some that you may want to play around with as it could improve how the game looks. Cognac is a really popular setting and if it's something you'd like to use, set it here. This tab is pretty much all personal preference, such as raising brightness, saturation, colorfulness, and luma sharpen could give you better visibility while playing the game. For example, summit settings from a short while ago were around 20, 30, 80, 80, and 20, with clarity being skipped over. Though this is all your preference. Just keep in mind, if you're recording or streaming, these effects will be seen by your stream, but if you change your color settings, etc. in the NVIDIA control panel, they won't be included unless you're using something to physically capture your display output from the cable that goes to your monitor. For the best FPS, just leave this disabled, save and continue. On the sound tab at the very top, binaural audio used to be an option I'd recommend you turn off as it did cause a memory leak, though this was around 10 to 11 months ago in the normal Tarkov game. Tarkov Arena being based on, of course, Tarkov using the same engine, maps, etc. could have the same issue. Though I'm a bit out of the loop in regards to this specific issue, I haven't
haven't heard much talk about it, so I assume that they've fixed this. Having this on should give you better perception of where sounds are coming from, but if the memory leak is still there, it'll cause much more RAM usage than having it disabled. For now, I'll leave it on, and if RAM is an issue, I'll turn it back off. Please do let me know in the comments down below if you know anything about this option. Then VoIP, entirely your preference, noise reduction, will give you a slight CPU hit as it does process your audio, disable this if you have a good quality microphone or don't really care about noise, etc. and you just want absolute raw performance all the time. You can also entirely disable VoIP here. And that's it. We can save and play the game. For me, I'll enable an FPS overlay using external software, which is something you'll need to do if you want an FPS counter. As far as I know, there isn't an FPS counter built into Tarkov. So enabling one and finding ourselves a game, maybe just, I don't know, TDM, we'll see what comes out of it. Remember, this one is using optimized settings on a 3080 Ti at 2K, so we'll see what kind of performance and stability we get in game. There's quite a bit running in the background of my system, so that will affect performance slightly, but nothing will change between optimized and unoptimized settings. Oh, and before we go, I do need to restart the game as we changed a lot of settings here as well. Okay, now we can try finding ourselves a game and seeing how it looks. We'll head into ranked TDM and see how it goes. We'll choose a map such as Bowl, pretty populated with items, airport as well, but should be a good check to see what kind of performance we get. Now, oh, heck, we can just enable everything so we can find a map quicker. Yep, there we go, a few seconds. As we're playing on Bay, we'll need to play on Bay next time as well to get consistent actual value data. There we go. In game, we're sitting at a solid 120-ish FPS. I'll start a five minute FPS capture just to see what kind of performance we get for more consistent results. I'll have to stop it here and we've got one round. We'll do the next. And we got killed by a teammate, but a whole bunch of visual effects later. Our FPS moves quite a bit between 120, 100, and maybe 80 or 90 as a low, but we'll get more consistent results afterwards. And with the game complete, let's get back to the menu and crank everything back up to where it was before we started optimizing. So everything was at medium pretty much, and we'll crank it up to, let's say, ultra, just so we get the best example of what quality actually looks like. Seems pretty good. I'll leave most of everything up except for motion blur or rather Z blur. There we go. Chromatic aberration. I suppose you can leave these. It's not too much of an issue. Save. All right. Now we'll quit and restart. And on your screen right now, you're looking at some results of what FPS looked like. I sat at around an average of 110, 115 FPS with a 1% average of 60 FPS, 0.1% low of around 24 to 50 FPS. The 1% average low was about 60, which is actually really good. The game didn't feel stuttery, and for most of the playtime, it was enjoyable. It wasn't stuttery during gameplay, stuttering for about 0.5% of the time while I was in game, meaning it actually performed really well. An average FPS of 114 with a high of 141, not bad at all. Now with our unoptimized, more default settings, let's even enable post FX, I suppose, and see what it performs like. So we'll hop back into a ranked game, once again TDM, and we'll need to find the exact same map just to keep it fair, which was Bay 5. And pretty much immediately we're at 70 FPS, which is a huge drop, but let's see how it goes. And now looking at data from the previous two games with pretty much everything default slash maxed out, I had an average FPS of around 70, 1% low of 34, and 0.1 of 11. Of this, around 1% of the time I spent stuttering, but noticeably there was tons of input latency, especially if I tabbed out to do something else. With a completely filled graphics card and very filled RAM, things definitely got sluggish to say the least. Then during the latter half of the game, for some reason, everything got super laggy and I spent most of my time in game, and in fact, about 60% of my time stuttering. That's it. The graph is completely busted as I'm pretty sure I had to tab out at this stage. So the FPS kind of went through the roof there or the game froze or something along those lines. Anyways, my computer was very unhappy with the game maxed out, uh, to say the least. Anyways, the optimization worked better than expected. It's actually more than playable and more than recordable. For some reason, most of my recording was just stuttering in the second game as the game ate my entire graphics card for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, leaving nothing left for OBS Studio. This would be fixed by capping my FPS to something a little bit lower than what I was getting on average, but you can see my average FPS for the second game or second half of the game was around 25, which is uh, not playable. 
Anyways, hopefully you found this video useful. I'll definitely be changing back to my optimized settings as those ones were really good. And not to mention my settings for Escape from Tarkov Arena will definitely carry over to the normal standard Escape from Tarkov game, making it far more playable. So hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. Mine's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.